Hello everyone, this is Zero's Trivia. Welcome back to the episode of our Forming Portugal Let's Play here in Crusader Kings 3. Last time we ended our episode with the death of our wife, our first wife, our soulmate. Um, so that changes a lot of things. First off, Astorga's uh, count is no longer our father-in-law in a sense, but it's very hard for us to get his land, at least before we pick up our next tier of crown authority, which is going to be pretty key. Uh, when we get this, I actually don't know if I can get this in my generation, just because uh, plenary assemblies are very hard for us to get at this point, especially since we went with city planning to begin. Um, so we're probably going to be stuck doing city planning for our generation. We don't have a lot of learning stats. It can get boosted with a new wife, which is what we are going to take a look at right now. Because getting married is not an option, but a necessity in Crusader Kings. So the choice of wife could go many, many ways. We can try to get ourselves our best alliance. For example, this will give us uh, Barcelona's claim. She's just a courtier. She has a lot of claims, though. But I'm not interested in getting claims in Barcelona. So this is not attractive to me. We could do alliance power. Well, a lot of kids, actually. Um, <laughs> of Aquatine. Are they strong here? Yes, quite strong. Two sons. She's way too young for us. Maybe for our new son, it's a possibility. Um, regardless of that, what I'm most interested in is traits. We already married for love. It's now marry for the future generation and actually i already spent some time looking through this list of suitable females some of them comes with alliance and if we sort by alliance power the strongest alliance we can get guess what Aquitaine, because she has robust uh, but once again way too young this could be for our next generation for ourselves i think we go with alicia uh, she's italian same religion that helps she has a house but she's on landed and does not have any claim so it's not even relevant there we prefer the intelligent trait which can be passed on in three versions um, basically plus one for every stats with 10 percent lifestyle experience boost plus three with 20 percent and plus five i believe with 30 percent uh, if we have all five candles uh, there's well there's the one quick version here and I think there are girls with the three tier three the five candles Let's see if we can find one no one? Oh, there we go genius right plus five and thirty uh, percent she's a tad old and plus I don't really care right she does have good stats across the board but low diplomacy high learning not what we're looking for at this point I just feel like uh, Alicia here is actually what we're looking for. Pretty balanced weakness in Marshall, which is something that we don't need ourselves. We don't lead any armies. So essentially sum of all skills. She's number one. Therefore, she wins. Suitable age. Good religion. Good trait. Um, her own traits. Vengeful. Not the greatest. Gluttonous. Not the greatest. She's pretty sinful as a Catholic, but she's diligent. This is actually a pretty good trait. I don't think she can pass it on, but um, it, it's not a. This is a good trait for our sons to pick up if we can ever get it. Maybe she can help us educate them. Not sure. She's also a torturer. I, I don't know how she picked this one up. Uh, it seems like you have to have this lifestyle to pick it up. So how could she, as an unlanded uh, lady, pick this up? But she has it. It's useful actually. Um, so I think we're going to marry her here. Uh, she'll definitely accept. We are going to be losing prestige because we're technically marrying down. But we're doing this for the future generations. Now, there is something to be said about having too many sons. But looking at what we plan to do going ahead uh, in terms of not forming kingdoms, because we can't. If we form kingdoms, we take away the possibility of forming Portugal, which requires that we do not 
uh, have a kingdom rank. We must have a title less than kingdom rank, which means we can only max out to duke, and we need the following four titles. So ideally speaking, every time we go through our succession, currently we're pretty much going to be stuck on confederate partition for a while, so all kids will try to inherit equally. So we want our number of sons to equal the number of duke titles we have. So right now my second son, youngest son, will pick up the duchy of Portacao. This is good because looking at our oldest son, he's going to be retaining all our individual counties. Our second son's not going to grab a county as long as he can get a duchy title. This duchy title is really empty in a sense because he doesn't actually get any of the land and we can easily reclaim it. Bigger brother with the warlike uh, trait beating down the little brothers. So if we get another son, all we really need to do is pick up another duchy title and then have the oldest son who's going to retain all the valuable land go to war with them and that's going to be fine. Uh, Coimba is what we're looking at and we actually have claims on two pieces of the county out of the three. So, and the third one's also a very independent liege. He's actually the weakest one. If we get this title, we can go to war with him directly. He has a few allies. That's the tricky part, which is why we haven't really messed with him. The Duchy of Coimba has not been created. I don't actually want to pay for this 250. Um, so, requires three of the four. Right, we already have this piece. Portacao came with three, but it's actually this piece is extra. Uh, we just need to pick up this one and this one. And once we do, right, once we have the three, we can leave it until we die. And if we have exactly three sons, our third son will automatically create this title because it's an uncreated title. So it will be given to us for free so that he can inherit something equal to his other brothers and that can save us a bit of money so that's kind of a goal we have before we die but first we have to survive this war so that marriage has been sent out let's see if um she will agree Ooh. right he's no longer married well i'm no longer married to his daughter i also consider marrying his second daughter Right, that's not historically unheard of. But uh, she's a little bit underage and her stats are nothing too great to speak home about. So I think in the end, not having a relationship with him means eventually we can go to war with him. And that's probably the outcome that we want to have. Right now I want him to die in battle. All right, so we're portals getting sieged. They're coming, my liege is coming. It's going to be quite a long siege, so if he can show up in time, I can hop in and join. Nothing else is happening. Yeah. We definitely don't want to lose it. We don't want to bleed control. Alright, we spend our prestige. We got ourselves a new wife. Excellent. And she needs to... I think... Just general assistance is good, plus 3, plus 3, plus 2, plus 2, plus 1. We'll take it. I think fifth, five, every 5 points is the threshold. A uh, bit waste on the learning and intrigue, and a shame that we couldn't get one more point of diplomacy on her. But perhaps there's a chance for that in the future. She doesn't really love us that much. Cultural acceptance is the issue. I can try to learn her language, I guess. We can learn Italian. And then we can basically improve our relations with all Italians. That is something we can consider. But overall, I think this is fine for now. We're pretty busy trying to get on the good side of our court physician so that she will heal us. We're still infected wounds here and trying to kill him to split his land so we can have an opening later on. And that also might even help with our current war since he's part of it as well. So we'll carry on, see if our liege shows up, and we'll come back then. Alrighty, so it seems like our liege finally caught up to them. Um, the coloring is a little bit weird. Um, our liege is the one with the 3000 ants in red, but then enemies are red, so it's kind of weird. 
but I'm rallying right next door to join the fight because he's about to reinforce as well. Uh, our liege did pay for some mercenaries who are wandering down. Not sure why he's going back. No, no threats. We could fight this, help them win, and potentially start the war down here as well because he's ready to summon his army onto the field so he can't defend the rest either. But we're going to first muster up right next door. And then we're going to jump into the fight to swing it. I believe they're fighting on the hill as well, so that's like super good for us. We are really good on the hill. Plus four minimum roll. All these extra advantages. Reducing enemy defensive advantage. And we can reclaim our territory as well. So let's get the march. We're in the battle. Chaos, our knight was maimed. Okay, he... He's not, he's, a, he's not my knight, he's a knight in our army. We'll take a look at all the knight stuff afterwards. Okay, so pretty easy win here. He's routing back. I'm going to go back as well. This loyal vassal. Ah, uh, he has been cheating us. Well, now that your daughter is no longer our wife... We gain 100 point of stewardship lifestyle experience for the challenge against him. There is a high percentage chance he'll pay us at least what we owe, and a chance that he'll pay us less, and we will spend prestige to get this. We can change our wife's support level to get a bit more for the challenge. Increase his tax, lose favor. And be his friend. No, no, no. That's not the direction we're headed with him. Okay. So I think we're going to do that challenge. Stewardship is technically our strength. And we can have our lovely new wife give us a 80-20 percentage. I like that. And we get some money, which is important too. We got it. Make sure I remember to switch the wife back afterwards. And that lifestyle boost will help us as well. Get back to replenish. I think he can fight that. Right, we can take a look at our battle. You can see who killed what. A lot of wounded. But not our guys, right? Luis is ours. Well, who died? A mayor? Why can't our guys die? Like, our three zero prowess knights? that we have sent out to die here. Two of our counts, our father. They just won't die. Hmm, quite powerful. Count Rodrigo. Well, they, they each killed one. So at least we know they fought. I wish they would end up like him, though. Well, we can dismiss this good win. He doesn't have enough. Ooh, he's called the Thief Slayer now, huh? If we do this, we become stressed by 75 at least. I don't think we're doing that anymore. It's been five years since we used to last. We were in debt last time, so it was very important. He has five now. He had two when we let him go, so he will make more and more, and eventually it will work out. What do we want to do? I guess we could join the siege, or like I said, we can counterattack given that their armies are shattered, but it's risky because our liege... Honestly, I want him to finish that building before we take it. This is a pretty good place. This guild hall has 14 loot. Maybe we can siege this down. We can go back and replenish for a little bit. Maybe at least one month so the man-at-arms at least fully healed. And we can consider buying 
the onagers, which we definitely need going on. So we'll we'll think about that and continue from there. Alrighty, so we decided against continuing the war. We couldn't declare war regardless with the army raids, so we disbanded it to get our options open. Our lead is fighting well. The 100 point did help with speeding up us getting a storeship point. And now we have a little bit more freedom. We could continue to work our way down towards Architect to get it faster. Uh, construction time obviously being the main thing. But immediate reward is not so apparent, right? Popular opinion for all our land, definitely good domain limit. We don't need this right now because we're not peaked. The only thing that I can think of that can compete with continuing down the Architect line is to get it is my domain because right now we do have a bunch of vassals. We have a bunch of vassals that we don't really care about and perhaps we can extort gold from them at various costs. Um, it's slightly random. If we just look at our potential targets, right, we're looking at our vassals here. Um, we need to see if they're rich enough. Dad is rich. Father, oh, ex-father-in-law is rich. He is very poor. He's pretty rich. He owes us 50. He's rich. And she's not so rich. How is he so rich? Our spy master has so much money. He should be giving us a gift. Anyways, um, well, demand payment is a potential possibility if we can get a hook on him, but he's our own spy master. It's going to be kind of hard to convince him to give me a hook on himself. It's like, help me fabricate a hook on you. Um, anyhow, so I think it is going to be quite useful to grab that, and that's a way for us to speed up how we get our money. So we're going to try this. It is my domain. And let's see if we can put that to the use. I actually have never done that before, but I think extort, yeah, it's, it's a decision. It will be random to see which one we get. Like we can't control which one of our vassals will get extorted. Uh, we only can do this every five years, sure. And notify me when it is available. And let's see what shows up. Yeah, we're fighting that army. Well, our liege is fighting that army again. Tough fight, but he's going to win this. So who did we get? No way. He's not a vassal. We can go beyond their inventory. So our court opinion will drop by 15 for 10 years. We can trade prestige for gold. Minus 15 on everyone for 15 for 10 years sounds very bad. The dread actually kind of helps. But I think we can we can trade prestige for gold. I'm down for that. We're trying to build a cathedral here. I guess that is one way to make a little bit of money. Anyhow, we let our liege win the war for us. Um, it's nice to have 3.7 per you know per month instead of raising an army and fighting it out. He can do all the fighting for us. Hopefully, he captures someone important. We'll see. Not quite right. He's just getting the battles won figures. Yeah, we'll leave the fighting to him. Enemy mercenary. From this, yeah, that's the start of the war. Like I said, I don't think our legion needs our help, and we'll proceed from here. And our son is going to pick up his second trait while looking kind of like father. Um, he got into a fight to save our courtier, a young lady, Adosita, who was getting picked on, and he jumped in to save her. Now, she doesn't look like potential wife material down the line, but uh, maybe a fair, who knows? This is going to be something we worry about later. Our son's same age as her, so we can see the bond. Essentially, we're going to pick up Brave. I'm happy to do this. It's a great trait, and uh, he'll like us more for it. Uh, likelihood of dying in battle, 
plus 100%. We already established that bravery is basically equal to stupidity for the most part. But we can see advantages in hills, right? Very good for us. And vassal opinion goes up, attraction opinion goes up, prowess, martial. It really does benefit him quite a bit. Alternatively, we can switch it to calm. Let me tell you how you could have, you know, me uh, mediated this. Um, I don't think we want this. Plus the stress on myself. Or switch it to zealous. His dead mother, his dead mom would be very proud. But, um, yeah, we're going with brave. Uh, pick up his second trait. He has one more trait left. He's starting to shape his personality. Uh, he's kind of like us, exactly like us. I don't know if he'll get a chance to pick up the last one just like us, but I have a feeling he's going to be fighting in some wars and dying in some wars. Uh, we raised our army, by the way. We're trying to retake the county here. Uh, it's not going to take too long. We get the help of our allies' army as well, so uh, that's kind of the goal right now. Nothing happening uh, across the board. Win this war, make sure we keep our bell, and then we'll think about counterattacking beyond that point. Hmm. What do we know? A emir to scare. A local mystic with dubious m uh, morals and a fabricated omen. Perfect. Before the mystic leaves for emir Adonis court, there is but one question. Will my false omen be one of fortune or of doom? So we're still trying to kill him. He might even die of old age before then. Who knows, right? It, there's a chance for that. There's four potential invites, but they're all going to take money, I believe. A bad omen, possible outcome. He spends sleepless nights worrying about it. He gains moderate health penalties and progress for the murder. He becomes more vigilant. Wow. Have a good omen for him. Medium health boost. Why would we want this? Nice, we got the good outcome. Now, we can invite a few people if we want to really up our success chance. There are a couple that has Chancellor and his Marshal. Can both be convinced with a sizable bribe. I'm not sure if I'm up for it. I'll take a low percentage shot at him, to be honest. I'm pretty stingy with the money at this point. Uh, we're still going to sway her till it goes much higher, and then we might even try to befriend her at that point. But that's pretty much where we're at. Alrighty, so the murder scheme continues as our spy master offers us a pouch containing a powder that can weaken the enemy's health, but we would need to provide a bit of a gift to make him touch it. And um, severe health penalties at his age might really do him in. It does cost us 15, but I think that's money well spent. So let's do it. To be honest, our spy master should be providing that money himself. Uh, he's a vassal, which is why he has income, just from that uh, single city that he holds, which I, I mean, I guess I understand why he has income. He's just saving really, really well. Our city back here is getting sieged, uh, Braga. We're trying to move back, but I obviously can't touch that army unless our liege comes with me. So we'll hover around. If he goes for it, we'll join him. If he doesn't, then we'll... You know, just wait it out, I guess. Oh no. My son helped pack the gift for Ymir Undis, and uh, he picked up not feeling well at his age. Seven years of poor health. Well, losing the son wouldn't be the end of the world. We have a backup son, and we're trying to keep it around three. The magic number is one son or three sons, in my opinion. Two is okay, because currently we have two duke titles, so if we die now, it'll be perfectly split between the two. Of course, we prefer if he doesn't die, he will be a decent knight, I imagine. Uh, do something, please. We have so many sickness issues. Do something. Um, this is high enough. We can end the current scheme with her. I could 
befriend her at this point to make sure she'll never do anything bad to me. It would just take a bit of time. And then after her, it would be our wife. I know the watering seems weird, but she came first, so... <laughs> uh, our wife likes us enough. Our liege is not moving. We'll continue to observe the situation. And we get a nice little random event where we basically get a story told to us from a wanderer. And we can pick either de-stress or some prestige gain. Our stress is not very high right now. She's a traveling poet. I wonder if she's actually a guest. I wouldn't consider recruiting her, but I'm just curious. No. I'm going to take the prestige. The stress level is fine. We can always work out if we're really desperate. There's also the, you know, uh, insularism movement in Great Britain. It started out in Wales and then Wessex picked it up. And now I think it's getting spread to Ireland as well. Oh no, it's House of Mercia. So basically this region. I mean, I saw Petty King and I thought maybe I Ireland, but no. Gotta be careful. Last time we called Elba English by accident. Uh, Scotland, Wales, and uh, England. Let's continue here. We're going to end up losing this here, which kind of bad, but uh, at least it's not direct ownership, right? The little kid has it, so it's fine. Our lead is busy replenishing. We're waiting for a faction revolt. Those peasant rebels, very soon, we will be ready for them. Ooh, I think this is a uh, 15 gold well spent every five years. Essentially, we pick up a rather powerful martial potential character. In this case, he's even good at intrigue, and they always come with flexible, well, not always flexible leader, but definitely tough terrain expert. So, uh, good commander in the potential in the future. And maybe a marriage bait as well. See if we can land ourselves some characters in the future with some good traits. Hmm. Genius with good stats or perhaps just better knights. We want someone young. Preferably our, well, I guess Iberian culture. Galatians are hard to find. Uh, well, Catalonian. Wait, she looks familiar. Oh, we could seek out a very high entry character for a potential replacement or spy master in the future. Content is good. Intimidated. Terrified. I like her a bit more, actually, despite the lower stats. But we kind of want robust. Caveline, she is not the type to be intimidated, but... I think it'll be fine. Ooh, Chas with a minus 25% fertility. It's not like he can't produce a kid, but it's going to obviously reduce the chance of that. Maybe intrigue is not going to work out. She's also brave. Yeah, we'll pick her up. We like to add a bit more character to our court, and these are good opportunities. Uh, we are about to lose this. He's not making up his mind. I think he couldn't pay for the mercenary army anymore, or the time was up. So this siege actually ended without him gaining anything. Anyhow, we'll be fighting this soon, and we'll come back for that. I guess befriending people is quite hard, as a feast in her honor was misunderstood as an assassination attempt. 
So she skipped out on it. We can apologize, have a little misunderstanding for the scheme power, which is fine, because it's very high, and we can gain 10 points, which will actually max us out. So I think that's actually pretty decent. We obviously ended up losing this. Um, this hurts control, but once again, since it's not our direct control, it's not going to hurt us that much. We could take it back, depends on what our, you know, idol liege wants to do. Regardless, we're just waiting for um, this to pop, and we'll continue to do that. And kind of as we predicted, the old man went ahead and killed himself. Old age, natural causes. He already had some poor health implications, but um, we didn't have to get our hand dirty. Now his kids should be splitting his land, which I'm interested if his army is going to take a hit. No way. They kept it together. What about his siblings? Oh, it's because they only have one duchy title. They would still be a lot weaker. His primary heir is his... Right, they only had one duchy title to split. So in essence, his brother... Multiple brothers split these multiple lands. Oh, that's a daughter. So this piece, this piece, are both his vassals. That's actually not ideal. We would like to avoid that situation, because it's very hard to get the land back from the brother. Direct control is what we like. Huh? Am I mistaken here? Aren't they both male? And both heterosexual? How... How is this a thing? Very confused. Huh. We can declare war on him. We would need to... Right, we have the claim on this title. He would not, I mean, his liege would come in for him, but his liege is ready on the field. It's not working out the way we wanted it to. Our bishop also got us another county title. We have a lot of titles now, as you can see. We were hoping to get a duchy title, but I guess we couldn't because that duchy title. It's in existence, so technically he could have gotten us this, he just didn't. It's a bit unfortunate. We could try to convert Mo's Arabic, but um, I don't know if that's worth the time. I'd rather get more claims. We pretty much already nailed the coastline. We don't necessarily need to take this, because once we get these two plus that, we pretty much can create our own duchy title. Alright, we'll work on this. Anyhow, we're waiting for the rebellion and waiting for our liege to do something. Alrighty, so as we close out the episode here, um, we have a situation with the war. The enemies are approaching. Uh, they have taken a small baron over here, as well as the count over here. They're working on portal. Our liege was defeated in the field and has recovered back a home. 
I am sitting on the borders because so far this is not our land, right? Um, and actually his dad died, so he actually has two of our counts now. Um, if he gets killed, it'd be really interesting. But he's sitting over here, so we can't do much about it. He has a weird inheritance structure because he's underage. It goes to, I believe, his mother? No. Wait, are they actually siblings? Oh, wow. Yeah, they're actually siblings. I mean, it makes sense. Um... He's a daughter. Unlanded. She has no claims. Does it go to the the husband? I don't think so. So like honestly, she should die. And then he would have no one in his house left to pass it to unless it goes all the way back to the other side of the tree which would be our king's line and that's why she's also considered it's weird i'm not going to worry too much about it we're going to try to revoke their title anyways in the future we have a bicker between our father and another count of ours both vassals we have a diplomacy challenge we'll try to do the challenge with our wife's help. Nine points in diplomacy. As you can see, it's still only 66 and 33% here. Not the highest, but uh, if we win, we get 150 prestige point. We get 100 points of stewardship lifestyle anyways. That's what I really want. I don't want to side with either one. The downfall is they each lose 10 point opinion of me, which I don't really care about. And it worked. Thanks to our wife. Very useful. She has very high um, diplomacy. Right, so the current situation is our liege failed on the field despite having slightly superior numbers. I think he just got really unlucky. Uh, we were sieging Braga back during that fight. I thought he was fine, but apparently not. We did take this back, but now because our liege's army is wiped, they were able to take two farther pieces of land away from us. We have retreated back. All our factions dissolved because the rabbles, we took care of the control situation. And for him, his dad obviously can't form a faction if he's dead. So um, we took care of that as well. We will monitor the situation. If it gets desperate where our liege is not coming, I don't imagine that would be the case. I think he's just waiting for some more reinforcement. But if it ever threatened any of our direct holdings, which is these three you see here, we will spend the money and buy mercenaries. We still have our nice little trait that we picked up with the mercenary acquaintance that will save us a little bit of gold. And from what we have, we can probably add another 750 uh, to our army. And uh, despite the numbers disadvantage, if we fight in the hills here, I think we have a shot um, at uh, defeating them. Or hopefully, I mean, hopefully it won't come to that. Hopefully the leads will show up. That's the goal here. And uh, we'll come back and continue here next time. So until then, bye.